right. Uh, well, good morning. Welcome to uh, What's New Worships. You're awake now. Anyway, uh, we've got a special service. Obviously, it's Mother's Day, so we just uh, are so happy. Uh, yeah, let's give the mother a hand. Um, happy with that. Also, we're going to do, uh, um, and it's a, kind of a traditional thing, but it was asked of us to do uh, by uh, Christ in the Bible. We're going to do a communion today at the end of the service, and uh, this is the first time we've done that uh, since we've been on our own, so that's pretty cool as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, our worship artist today, and uh, the leader, and, and uh, so blessed to do that. So let's pray and just ask the Lord a blessing. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for this day. We do, Lord, thank you for our mothers. God, and uh, how valuable uh, they are. And, and God, there's no other way to say it. You put uh, human superheroes on the planet for us. So God, we thank you for that. We praise you for that. And Lord, um, we ask for encouragement for them today. Uh, some of us have lost um, moms and grandmothers. And, and God, we miss them. And we, uh, we, we pray for um, uh, those days, that day when we get to stand uh, before you and, and see our family and friends that have gone on before us, Lord, so we praise you for that. Lord, uh, bless this service as we uh, talk about and uh, look at how we can leave a legacy. Lord, we love you and thank you for all you're going to do. In your precious name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
find anywhere in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Um, legacy, outlive your life. Isn't that, isn't that just a neat thought in itself? Legacy, just uh, outlive your life. Uh, we're going to start with this. To whom much is given, much, much is required. required. Much is required. Some of you new people are like, what in the world? Uh, what we try to do here is we try to give you something every week that you can take home that God gives you from His Word, and then you are required to do something with it. So that's kind of the, 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 the thought that we do here. And, and so, uh, legacy, outlive your life. Um, I, I was listening to a preacher uh, not too long ago, and he was talking about... Um, uh, talking to his congregation, he said, how many of you knew your great-great-grandparents' first names? And, and, of course, nobody in the... And he said, um, that hasn't been that long ago. How quickly uh, the insignificant things in our life um, are forgotten. And, and, and I want you to think about the, the Scriptures. Some of the stories that we have in the Bible and, and how they lasted thousands of years. Isn't that awesome? Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be a neat thing, and I don't know if this is possible or, or, or how this could ever happen, but wouldn't it be awesome if you can do something so impacting for Christ that you were remembered 2,000 years later? Sure. Be amazing. And, and that's kind of what uh, Scripture, listen, it sounds impossible, but Christ told us that we were supposed to do greater things. So it is possible. How do we do that? Man, I tell you what, I want to start with this. My, I, I, it's Mother's Day. I, um, I love my mom. I have an awesome mom. I'm going to cry, so go ahead and plan on that. Um, um, I was just thinking about the legacy left in my life. I was thinking about... Uh, how my mom was at uh, soccer games and basketball games. How my mom, my mom cooks uh, very well, as you can tell. Um, my, my mom uh, is a loving person. My mom is probably, and I'm just going to brag about my mom. My mom's one of the most welcoming, uh, loving people you'll ever meet. Matter of fact, uh, that's what she does at, at, at the school she's working at right now. People come in, and she's the first face that they see. And, and my mom had, my mom uh, is a. a uh, she's not a licensed doctor, but if you talk to my mom, she seems to think she knows everything about that. And, she, and a lot of times she's right. My, my mom's nuts a little bit. She, uh, everything can be fixed at the chiropractor, uh, even sinus infections and all kinds of things. And, and, and I, I tell you what, I absolutely just love my mom. Amen. My, my mom... This might be a very long service if i got to keep pausing. <laughs> my, my mom and dad, my mom and dad would pray. Matter of fact, one of the coolest things I ever heard at, at, my, at my, uh, my wedding, my dad did um, the service, and, and he said to Christine that uh, I was born in 1977, and my dad said, in January, my dad said to Christine, that he and my mom started praying for her in 1976. Isn't that awesome? Um, my mom has prayers written for us, for me and my sister and my brother. And she has personal prayers that she prays over us every day. Um, I wanted to read something to you. And she's not here, so I'm going to say this on camera. Mom, I love you. There was something that was recently said, and I'm gonna, I want to read it to you, and it says this. Uh, mothers are teachers. Mothers are disciplinarians. Mothers end up being nurses and doctors. They're psychologists. They're counselors. They heal broken hearts. Right? They're chauffeurs. They're coaches. 
mothers are developers of personalities. That's awesome. Mothers are molders of vocabulary. They are shapers of attitudes. Mothers are a soft voice when you need to hear I love you. They are a strong voice when, they, when you need to be protected. And then this was the, the, this was the most impacting thing I read when I was studying this week. Mothers are a link to God. A child's very first impression of God's unconditional love will come from his mother. You all got a lot on your shoulders. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to come back to that statement and that's going to kind of come full circle because uh, it's important that we, we think about that and, and God's unconditional love and how it's shown to us. And I got a video and the whole deal, but go ahead and pull up the, the first slide for me. I want to, we're going to start in Matthew here. And this is a, a mother's request, and I'm going to get through this pretty quick, like I say, because we have communion, and that's going to be important as well. But Matthew 20, 20, and 21, it says, Then the mother of Zebedee, uh, Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons, and kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it that you want, he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in the kingdom. Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. And it says, You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but, it, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared for by my Father. Then a couple verses later, it says this. Go ahead and pull it up. It says, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. And, and we're going to look here just for a couple minutes. And again, this is going to be some quick stuff. But we're going to look here at this prayer of this mother. So go ahead and pull up the first one. I want you to see this. It says, uh, uh, She prayed for her children to be a part of God's kingdom. One of the coolest prayers I think that you could pray is to pray and ask Jesus to uh, be your children's Savior. Pray for your kids to grow up to know who Christ is. You can't, listen, the, the, um, I've heard this statement a, a, a few times. It says you cannot be a grandchild of God. So um, what that means is your parents, your mom, and your dad, they can pray for you as much as possible. But it ultimately is your decision to... And, and what a neat thought. Um, I know my mom prayed for me to come to know Christ. I know that was, I know that's her prayer for uh, her grandchildren. Um, there was a guy named Paul Washer. I showed his video and, and uh, he said, um, him and his wife, they were praying, and the prayer was this. He said, God, I want you to take my children, and I want you to take them in the deepest, darkest place that there is. And I want you to place them there with the cross of Jesus. And if they die for His sake, then I can't wait to see them on the other side. And I started thinking, man, what a prayer that is. Praying that your children not only become Christians, but that they, uh, they do something. I, I, uh, the, the next verse, as a matter of fact, this is a verse that's pretty popular. It says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? And I started thinking... Gosh, yeah, I pray for my kids, all kinds of stuff. And you've probably prayed for your children, all kinds of stuff. And you've asked God to take care of their education. And you've asked God, like my parents, you've asked God to take care of their marriages and, and their lives. And, and, and you've asked God to do all these different things in their life. And, 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 and that, that's great. You want your kids to grow up. And, and many of you are striving for your kids to graduate college. And you want, them to, you want them to be successful. And you want them to have a good job. And you want all these things for your kids. But, but what does it profit a man if he's gained all of that and his soul uh, goes to hell? So it's very important, parents, 
that we pray like this mother and we pray for our children to be a part of the kingdom. And go ahead and pull up the next one for me. She prayed with great expectation, right? She didn't just... Think about this prayer that was just prayed. She said, uh, I don't want my kids to just get to heaven. Uh, Jesus, I want to have the seats right beside you. I mean, that's a big time prayer, right? I mean, think about the expectation of that prayer. And, and, and then go ahead and pull up the next slide. It says, speak life. It says, speak life. And, and, and the verse is Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. But, but I was thinking about, man, this, this, this big, these big expectations. Have big expectations for your kids. Have big expectations for what you want them to do. Man, I tell you what, I'm 37. I just kind of gave that away with you, what year I was born and all that. And, and this week, my dad was down at the uh, NACA in in. Every morning this week, I got a text and I posted a couple of them on Facebook, and it says, "It said, Andy, uh, you remember who you are. You were at Holmes, and you were called to change the world." And he said that he said that on the first day. The second day, he said, "Andy, I want you to tell your kids that they're Combses, and we're called to change the world." Uh, you know what that did to me? I ready to change the world. <laughs> Man, you, you don't know how much your words mean. So we've got to we've got to be positive and, and lift people up, and not just not just our kids, just people. Because people, you know what? The church has done a lot of beating down, right? And it's it's time for us if we're going to get out there, we're actually going to do this. We're going to have to encourage each other and, and find the things that we're doing well and, and encourage people to do them. And, and and then the things that people are doing well. And, and you know what? I, I can't say this enough. Our church has been. You've given way more than I ever thought. I mean, it's unbelievable when I hear the stories that are going on. Matter of fact, one of the mothers in here just gave away her, her prize already this morning. I already heard. Amen. So we, we, there's a group of awesome girls. I praise God for that because you know, what it, you know what it does? It causes you to want to give more. So you tell your kids that, hey, you're doing a great job. You know, and, and, and so we speak life. And then, and then because of this verse, I want you to look at that verse. There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. I don't know if there's a greater verse in the Bible. Isn't that an awesome verse? You should have to memorize that, hold on to that. Because I tell you what, the devil's going to slip in every once in a while. He's going to tell you, you stay. You're right. You can't manage. You're, you can't go one. You have no right to call yourself a Christian. You can't do anything like And the devil will do that. And then you'll have this verse. And matter of fact, what Scripture says is you hide God's Word in your heart that you might not sin against it. Because I tell you what, a lot of times when we're down and we've been kicked around by the devil, we'll start to mess up again. You know what I'm saying? Hold on to this verse. Because it says... There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. All that's been forgotten, man. What an awesome, awesome thought. Go on to the, the next one for me. She prayed for her children to be involved in the kingdom. Kingdom building. So not only does she want her kids to, to get there, and obviously that's a prayer. Everybody wants our kids to just make it in. And, and she had these great expectations for her kids. And I hope, I hope you have parents like I have parents, and maybe some of you don't, but I hope somebody in your life has put these great expectations in, and has told you that you can, that, that, you, that all things are possible and, uh, through Christ, and that if God's for you, then, then who can be against you? And I hope somebody's feeding you that stuff because I tell you what, you need to hear it. You need to hear how loved you are. You need to hear how you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You, it, you need to maybe find, look on, just look up Scripture that talks about how God detailed you out. If you need a confidence builder, builder recognize that the God of the universe spent time on you, gave you a name, Give you gifts. And that should lift you up. And, and then, then pray for the kingdom to be built. And, and that was the verse there about the serving. And, and she didn't just want her children. She, don't we have enough of people that are just getting to heaven? And that all leads me to the next part of, the, of my message. So go ahead and pull it up. So how do we leave this legacy? What if? You know what? Wouldn't it be cool... If when I trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, wouldn't it be cool if I just disappeared? Wouldn't it be cool if I was just gone? Wouldn't it be cool if, if, if instantly, as soon as I recognized Jesus as my Savior, wouldn't it be cool if, it, if, if I just went straight to heaven? But you know what? That, that doesn't happen, does it? And you know why? Because we're supposed to leave a legacy. We're supposed to do something for the next generation. We're supposed 
to do that, so go ahead and pull up uh, this. The first thing that you need to do is obey. Now, I'm going to get into this here in just a second. Go ahead and pull up the verses for me. I want you to see this. Um, this is kind of the background, and I'm going to tell you why this, this passage of uh, Scripture is important. Joshua 3, 14 and 15, it says, So when the people broke camp across the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage. So what they're saying is that every, the, everything's flowing fast. The, the river is, I mean, just moving down down. And yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, go ahead and pull it up, look what happens. The water from the upstream stopped flowing and it piled in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zerathian. While the water was flowing down the sea, of, and I'll skip all that, the priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground. I, I, want, you to, I want you to think about this because it's, it's going to be important to the next part of the, the, the message here, but, but this is the... Um, this is a miracle that just happened. Right? I mean, I want you to I want you to think about this. These men are supposed to carry the Ark of the Covenant and, and it's flood season and, and they're being told this is what you gotta do. As a matter of fact, they were given, if you start reading the whole passage, they're supposed to stay a certain amount away from the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. They had to walk a certain way, they, they had to separate a certain way, and all this was going on and and, and and it's flood season. So they're getting ready to cross the Jordan and they're being told to do all this. So they had to obey, they had to follow the details, they had to do what they were being told. So you can't just kind of flub through this life without picking up the the, the the rule book every once in a while. You got to know what it says. So we have to obey. But so here they are now. They start to step in the water, and the water starts. Man, I wish I would have lived in the Old Testament sometimes, right? Can you imagine seeing a river just stop for the presence of God? Can you imagine that? I mean, all of a sudden you step in the water, and it just start, it says it was piling up. <laughs> What in the world? I mean, just imagine that. What an awesome thought. Now watch. This is cool. Go into the next one. Let's build something together. Got a picture of a child. So this is what happened. That, that's what happened. In, in, so God did this miracle. Listen, this is awesome. I want you to get this. God did this awesome miracle for the people. And watch what he does next. Go ahead and pull it up. It says in Joshua 4, 4 through 5, it says that Joshua called together 12 men that he appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and he said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites. Go ahead and pull up the next one. Now watch. To serve as a sign among you. This is awesome. In the future, when your children ask you what do these stones mean, you tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And, and go ahead and pull it up. Watch. Has God ever healed anybody in here? How do we leave a legacy? You build a memorial. You need to, listen, I, I, I was encouraged by this myself. You need to write it down. What, wouldn't it be awesome if your great-great-grandkids someday are picking up something and they see where you wrote down how Jesus Christ changed you, how, how He healed you, how He took that infirmity away, how He, how he took the cancer away, and, and, and years later, you, you build, I, I'm going to do this. This was, was encouraging me. When something happens, we start writing it down because I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want God to be forgotten. I don't want what God's done in my life to be forgotten. So if, if He's ever healed me, I want to build a memorial. Has God ever delivered you from an addiction? Anybody been delivered from an addiction in here? Praise God, and then we need to do something about it. Let's build a memorial, some type of memorial, and say, so that when your kids grow up, and maybe you're going, and your great grandkids grow up, and maybe they're struggling with an addiction, they'll see, my grandfather kicked this addiction's butt, and I can't too, through the name of Jesus. And we leave a legacy that way. Isn't that awesome? And, and, and then it says, has God pulled you out of the hell of this life? Has some of you been through that? So leave a legacy. Build some kind of memorial. Do something. Write a book. Write it down in some emails. Write a journal. Leave it for your kids. Tell your kids. Share with your kids. I know some of us try to hide all the sin and all the background that we had in our past. But one day it might be what frees your children. And they need to know that God took something that you thought was impossible and He made it possible. Isn't that awesome? And then it says, 
Has he ever helped you out of a financial situation? Amen. What we got to do is we got to start sharing. But I tell you, and all of this leads up to this because I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my own soul. So what about this? Go ahead and pull it up. Has God ever saved you? And you need to build a memorial to that. You need to write that down. You need to put that. You need to put that on the paper. You need to put that in your house. You need to. You need to write it in your Bible. Share it so that one day, man, I tell you what, wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome if your name was to be passed on generation after generation, and and, and grandchildren and great grandchildren and great great grandchildren and great 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 grandchildren pick up a Bible that says my my. My family, this is how I got here. They've been living for the Lord, and because of them, I have an opportunity to go to heaven. Because my dad gave his life to Jesus, my mom gave her life to Jesus, my grandparents gave their life to Jesus. And, and when I start thinking about that, man, I, I'm so thankful for my great grandmother. And I, I hear my dad talk about her and how he would pray, and I'm thankful for my grandparents. And, and I would walk into my grandmother's house, and I would see her with her Bible open. I am thankful for these people in my life that have taken the time to put Jesus first. They passed on a legacy to me. Go ahead and pull it up. Deuteronomy 6, 1 and 2. It says, These are the commands, decrees, and the laws your Lord God directed me to teach to you. Observe the land that you're crossing, the Jordan to possess, so that your children, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord, your God, as long as you live by keeping all those decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy a long life. I, uh, I think those things are awesome. I think that's an awesome characteristic that my mom's done. She's already praying for lilies. She's 10 weeks old, and we're, they're praying for her life partner. They're praying for her husband. So that not just her children, but her children's children know the fear of the Lord and know the Lord. Last night I was even um, in, in my study and I was just praising God for a man named J.O. Grooms. Um, and it's weird that I was, I was praising God for him, but J.O. Grooms and his wife, they, they groomed Mike Grooms. And Mike Grooms grew up to be the pastor at Chendo Valley where my dad... My dad and mom went to church and my dad and mom got saved. And because my dad and mom got saved, they were able to teach me and my brother and my sister about Christ. And, and because of them, I'm able to teach my son and my daughter. And Katie can teach Liliana and my brother can teach his kids about the Lord. And, and I just started praising God for the Grooms family last night. It's awesome. I'm going to share how my dad got saved. It popped in my head, so I, it's a good story. I'm going to tell it a little quick. My dad started, he left, um, he left the public schools and went to Shanda Valley. He took my mom to Shanda Valley and he was taking all the public school kids with him. He was a coach. He took all the public school kids to him. And um, this is how my dad got saved. This is an awesome story. My dad, back in the 70s, this Afro thing was going on pretty good. And so my dad got to church and he sat behind a woman with this big old Afro going on and he said I couldn't see the pastor and so at the end of the search at the end of the search on I think it was on Monday Pastor Mike uh, showed up at my dad's house and said hey I didn't see you at church yesterday and my dad said well I didn't see you either <laughs> but that's why he showed up at my dad's house and then then he stood there and shared with my parents about the love of Jesus and, and my parents got saved that day because of an afro in church <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. I want you to see this. This is the other thing that impacted me this week while I was studying. Look at this. Christianity is, Christianity is never more than one generation from extinction. In our Bible study this past Monday, we were talking about how fortunate, and I was, I was sharing with the group, and, and we were all kind of sharing testimony and things, and, and I was sharing how fortunate I was to be born into a Christian family. We were talking about the, 
the, the people in, in Africa and all these other places that have never ever heard have never ever heard of Jesus. And, and it's not true at some point, listen to what I'm trying to say, at some point a relative let them down. A relative let them down. A, a, a great, 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 great descendant decided that they were going to walk away from Christ and, and not talk about Him and not share Him with people and they didn't. And now, now, now many years later, there's groups of people in our world that have never heard Him. It's because of, 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 a, of, a, of a relative that has let them down. And, and that, isn't that a scary thought? Christianity is never more than one generation from extinction. Go ahead and pull up the next one for me. This is just a story that I was reading, and it says, A.T. Pearson records the careful study that has been done concerning the descendants of the Jukes and the Edwards families. The Jukes family was known for its long line of criminals. A total of 1,200 descendants were traced, uh, uh, of which 400 were physically abused. 310 became wards of the state. 130 were convicted criminals, and 7 committed murder. Only 20 out of 1,200 ever learned a trade, and half of those learned that trade in prison. On the other hand, some 400 descendants of Jonathan Edwards, a great preacher from the last century, have been traced, of which 14 became college presidents. A hundred professors, a hundred ministers, and more than a hundred lawyers and 60 plus judges. We've got to leave a legacy. We've got to leave a legacy with our children and our grandchildren. And, and, and look, this isn't, isn't just now. I, again, I don't know how to make you comprehend this. This is years from now. This is a hundred years from now. What you do for the Lord today will make an impact in, your, in, in people that will never even remember your name. What an awesome thought. Go on to the next one for me. I'm proud to say this. My mom loves me. Uh, my mom loves me no matter what. My mom would do anything for me. Um, moms get thrown up in one, they get coughed on, they get spit on. <laughs> You're laughing when this happened. One time, I, and I think I've shared this with you guys before, one time when Michaela was little, she was sick, and, and she threw up all over Christine. I mean, all over Christine. Christine's laying on the couch, just fountain, right? And I said, oh, honey, hold on just a second. I want to go get my camera. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got thrown up on. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> By Christine, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I love my mom, and I know my mom loves me. And, and um, <coughs> My mom would defend me for anything. There's something special about moms that, uh, and we've even called them this, the mama bear, right? You mess with my kids and you're going to get to see mama bear. How many of you have been mama bear? You don't mess with somebody, you don't mess with a woman's kids because she, uh, she loves them. Listen, is that because she's crazy? Well. <laughs> it's, it's not because that she's got anger issues. I, I want you to hear this. She loves them. She loves them unconditionally. Matter of fact, the love is so amazing that when somebody goes to mess with her children, a rage shows up inside of her that, that she can't contain and she wants, she wants to make it right. You are not going to mess with my kids. Which brings me back to the beginning of the message when I was talking about that great responsibility because, man, it just, it just, it just absolutely hit me in the, in the heart when I was reading it that, that moms are the very first impression of God and what God, how God loves us. I got a video and I want you to think of yourself as this little, this little baby bear. I want you to think of yourself as this little baby bear. And then the devil's a roaring lion. I want you to watch this. Some of you might have seen this. I'm going to try to get this out of the way. 
Look for that candy. <laughs> The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Some of you have been that bear. You ran yourself off on some limb that you can't get, there's no way out. And then God spared you another way and you've fallen. Matter of fact, sometimes the fallen has been the despair. And he landed in the water, and then there he is. Now he's facing, and he's taking some shots right there at the end. And he didn't get away scar free. Matter of fact, he took he took, took a couple claws to the face. He took some scars. He's got some scars. The devil's the devil's probably left some of you some scars. But your Father in heaven loves you. And he hates when the devil starts messing with his kids. Let me just show you a couple verses. Then we'll have Christina sing the same song she sang at the beginning. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then it says, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And go ahead and pull up the next one. It says, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, and my refuge, my Savior, you saved me from violence. 
I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. And we go on to the next two. Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And Psalms 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When, when we think about what we've been through, when we think about how the devil's chased us and how he's taken shots at us, how he's kicked on us a little bit, how he's stomped on us a little bit, the, the God Almighty that loves you, he, he's had enough. And matter of fact, if you'll do what that little bear did at the end, he starts calling you, you've got to run to him because he just saved you. He wants to save you. And you're going to need that protection. I asked Christina if you'll come again. I asked her to sing that song one more time, the sound of your great name. I, I want you to listen to the words. I want you to think about the love that was given in it. I, I want you to, I want you to, I wish I could give you the excitement that I get when I hear it. But when it says the enemy has to leave at the sound of your great name, then we should be shouting Jesus all the time. And I want you to know. One of the greatest examples of Jesus that was given to me was my mother. But the reason why she's the greatest example is because my mother pointed me to Jesus. And He loves me. And when the devil's taking shots at his kids, He's ready to protect us and defend us. Would you stand with me and sing this song and we'll move right into our communion service. I need you to sing this song, though. Listen, you've got something to praise for, okay? Now, this isn't just... I want you to... Some of you need to, some of you need to make the enemy leave right now. He, he's messing with some of your lives right now. He's in the middle of an addiction right now. He's in the middle of your marriage right now. And, and you know what? Just, just call out to him. Let's, let's get you to praise him. Yeah. Hey. 